Yohanna. Wanakam. Ambayoni Dimel. This is Boston Lanka News bringing you news, views and entertainment from Boston and USA. Youth exchange program between young people from North and South to learn on peace building and to find reconciliation. Cardinal Malcolm Ramjit in New York preaching the message of healing. Major General Shavindra Silva speaks out at the screening of the film Sri Lanka Killing Fields in New York. Sri Lankan origin American actress Tushari Jayasekaran speaks about her Hollywood acting career. About 60 young people from Trinko, Kalmune, Batiklo, Mana, Bulatib and Vaunia will be in Colombo for a week-long exchange program this week. This youth exchange program is organized by the Rotary Clubs in Colombo in collaborations with the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, UNESCO and U.S. Embassy. These young people will be meeting prominent leaders, visiting multi-religious places, engage in peace and leadership sessions and of course doing fun activities like visiting the zoo, museum and watching a movie in Colombo. Pushpi Virakon is one of the lead organizers of the exchange program. Pushpi is a Rotary Ambassadorial Scholar who had done graduate studies at Harvard University on conflict transformation and mediation. Pushpi joins with Boston Lanka from Colombo to talk about this youth exchange program. Uh, Pushpi, uh, could you uh, share with us about this exchange program? It's about um, bringing kids from the North and East, and also taking kids from the South to uh, visit each of these uh, areas to understand um, the livelihoods, the way they live, and to get a feel of how uh, people function in these two different areas after uh, the 30-year-old year. In your view, Pushpi, uh, what is the significance of this program? We are trying to um, add to the existing programs by um, making sure that uh, those kids would understand, especially the kids from the north who have not been able to visit Colombo or the south at all in their life, that um, we too function in the same way and that we want to share um, our values, our cultures, and also build the relationship between the Tamils, Muslims, Sinhalese, um, and also uh, Burgers, and sort of to uh, bring about the idea of coexistence um, in a peaceful manner, and also to build the leadership skills in these kids so that they would be able to contribute to the development and the reconciliation process happening right now in Sri Lanka. So we'll be actually um, training them in um, conflict transformation, uh, a bit of peace building, just giving them the basic idea. And then also we would be giving them, um, each student, 20,000 rupees to go back to their areas and implement projects to help develop their own area. So these projects would be thought about by the student, by, uh, you know, given the capacity that they come here with and then the capacity they go back with after Going by going through this uh, program, um, and we would be there throughout the helping them to initiate the uh, project and also in the process of them doing the project, so that uh, we would the, the kid and us would be able to develop this uh, project in such a manner that it would actually contribute to the ongoing process of the national uh, reconciliation and the development. Thank you, Pushpi. Uh, that was Pushpi Virakon from Sri Lanka. Cardinal Malcolm Ranjit visited United States this week and celebrated the Holy Mass at St. Rita's Church in Staten Island, New York. This was the first visit of His Eminence to the United States. Church has a crucial role to play in helping to bring healing after the country's bloody civil war, according to Cardinal Malcolm Ranjit. His Eminence's message to the community was to reach out to every individual, especially to the affected parties of the conflict. His Eminence stressed the importance of appreciating their contribution to bring true permanent peace to their mother nation. The Sri Lankan Catholic Choir of New York and New Jersey sang praise worship on this historic occasion.
Venerable Konyana Thero, Chief Monk at Staten Island Buddhist Vihara, Dr. Palita Kohona, Permanent Representative, and Major General Shavendra Silva, Deputy Permanent Representative of Sri Lanka to the United Nations, also graced the occasion. After the worship service, the Sri Lankan Catholic community hosted His Eminence to a reception and fellowship. The event was well attended by over 450 Sri Lankans. Ambassador Major General Shavindra Silva, Sri Lanka's Deputy Permanent Representative to the United Nations, was the uninvited guest at the screening of the 50-minute documentary Sri Lanka's Killing Fields, sponsored by the Amnesty International last Tuesday in New York. General Silva, commanding officer of the 58th Division, alleged that filmmaker Callum Macquarie had been sponsored by someone to visit New York to discredit the government of Sri Lanka. General Silva expressed his surprise and disappointment at the failure of the organizations to invite him, the only senior military official shown on Sri Lanka killing fields, for the screening of the film in New York and the discussion that followed. Alleging the organizers wanted to avoid him, Silva said that he felt the need to respond to war crime allegations. When filmmaker Macquarie pointed out that Major General Silva should have made representations to the Lessons Learned and Reconciliation Commission instead of coming to the screening, General Silva shot back saying that he had appeared before the LLRC twice. General Silva further pointed out that it was Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch and the International Crisis Group that declined an invitation extended by the LLRC to give evidence before the Commission. General Silva said that although he was not given an opportunity to provide a video evidence to support Sri Lanka's case at the discussion by the organizers, he somehow managed to distribute photocopies of the relevant pictures and video shots to the audience. Meanwhile, according to the Amnesty International blog, at the discussion that followed after the screening, Dr. Palita Kohona had admitted that the film seemed to show some violations that would be looked at. Now, news at a glance. The report of the Presidential Commission, headed by Justice Shirani Tilakavodana, which had inquired into alleged corruption running into millions of dollars in the purchase of arms for the military, was not released yet even after four years, according to the opposition sources. According to the government, the report could not be released due to national security reasons. The ongoing demining operations in the northern and eastern provinces would take nine years to complete, according to the government sources. Since 2002, the government had cleared an area of about 5,600 square kilometers in the two provinces. Sri Lanka had received the assistance of Switzerland, Denmark, Great Britain, US, Japan, Australia and India to carry out demining. Hundreds of three-wheel taxi drivers in Sri Lanka's capital held up traffic last Tuesday to protest against a taxi company linked to a ruling party politician from using a fleet of Tata Nanos. Nano considered to be world's cheapest car. Nano services offered at a lower price than air-conditioned cars and their fares are comparable to three-wheeler charges. We are going to lose our jobs and the Nano cabs will take over our taxi stands, a spokesman for the protesters said. A New York-based media rights organization on Tuesday called for an international inquiry into the death of a Sri Lankan television presenter who was allegedly executed by government forces. The bullet-riddled body of a female TV anchor known as Isipriya was shown by Britain's Channel 4 in the documentary Sri Lanka's Killing Fields. Sri Lankan actress Tushari Jayasekara plays the role Pinky on America's first South Asian sitcom, Outsourced. This weekly TV program is watched by about 3.3 million in the USA, according to the Nielsen survey. Born in Sri Lanka, raised in California, Tushari spoke with Boston Lanka regarding her adventures in Hollywood. 
Uh, Tushari, uh, you play the role Pinky in the widely popular television series Outsourced. Uh, could you please tell us about your experience being part of the weekly television series in a major TV uh, network in the United States? It was such a wonderful opportunity to play the role of Pinky on NBC's Outsourced. It was a blessing to work with a wonderful cast, crew and production team. And I was excited for my work to be seen by millions across the USA and around the world. And to have a chance to work consistently was an extra blessing. And it's so fun to contribute positively to a project that, I don't know, that people are so excited about creating something fun and colorful for the audience. So to be involved in that is just, I don't know, it's indescribable. Okay, Pinky, let's do this. If you'll hold, please. I'd like to transfer you to my manager. But Pinky, we haven't even started yet. Your call is very important to us. Please stay on the line. Estimated wait time is five minutes. <laughs> okay, who's left? Um, how did you get the role Pinky? Um, could you share a little bit about the process of the production, uh, selecting you to play this particular role? Okay, so back in March of 2010, I went to an open call for Outsourced. And I was selected to be featured and I told myself, whatever that I do, I'm going to do the best job possible. If it's just 30 seconds of work, five minutes of work, it doesn't matter to me. I will do the best job possible. And I was very enthusiastic. And I think I did a great job. I felt, you know, I did, I brought my best self. And it was amazing to work with a cast that was excited and energized to create something new for the American television. And I think everyone was excited as well because they were creating a sitcom from an independent film by John Jeff Cord and George Wing. And I was very excited to be a part of that. In May of 2010, we found out that Outsourced has been picked up for NBC's Thursday night lineup. How exciting is that? And then in July, when they were ready for production, the first assistant director called me and they invited me back to the call center. And then by this time, I also had gotten an agent. And then uh, they called the agent as well and told them that they wanted me to audition for the role. And so I went to casting. I dressed up as what my take on the character was. I wore Indian attire, a bindi, and my accent was a different one, 10 times exaggerated because it's comedy, a sitcom. So I think, well, I think I did well because then I got offered the role and that's how it came to be. Now that you got a role in a hit comedy series in a major TV network in the United States, uh, what are your future goals as an actress in Hollywood? It was wonderful to be on a major network and I think I still have ways to go as a performer and roles. It's just one stop on my journey. And I hope to do my own projects, work on other film, television, commercials, whatever it may be. I just want to continue and move forward and work. And I think that's what any actor can ask for is have the offer of a variety of roles and use the skills to bring the characters to life. So I'm very excited to continue my journey in the entertainment industry. Thank you, Tushari. 
Uh, that was Tushari Jayasekar from Los Angeles. That concludes our news edition. We meet you again with another news edition of News, Views and Entertainment from Boston and USA. Till then, goodbye.